Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord will honor you in Jesus' name. Now, today is our talk back. Praise the Lord. Amen. And um, mommy gave us a very wonderful theme to look at for the talk back. Um, but unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to prepare you for it. Praise the Lord. But we believe that um, God is still going to do great things in our midst in Jesus' name. Now, the, the song that our mommy led us into, um, the, is it the anthem now or the, which one? The anthem. That was a very lovely song. You agree with me? I would have loved us to sing everything, but mommy has said we should just take 1,000. Praise the Lord. Maybe at the end of the service, we'll do all. Amen. The Lord will bless you this morning in Jesus' name. What we want to look at, there's no message today. What we want to look at is forgiveness. What did I call it? Forgiveness. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, before we, we give you an opportunity to come out to share your experience, I have a small write-up here and I want to read from that write-up. And I hope it will help to make one or two of us share your experience. Because, like I said, since we didn't have enough time to prepare you, and no one has come up to us to ask that he or she wants to share his experience. But after now, um, we will give you at least four persons or five to quickly come out and share their experience if you want to. But we really need you to share your experience so that we all can benefit. Praise the Lord. You agree with me, forgiveness can be very difficult. Amen? Especially if it's something somebody did, somebody very close to you is the person who hurt you. Am I correct? It can be very difficult. But this morning, God will give us grace in Jesus' name. I'm reading from uh, the word for today. I'm sure many of you must have seen this. I'm reading directly from there. I'm reading verbatim. And I'll be reading the write-up of night um, May 6 Wednesday May 6 the topic there is the power of forgiveness the power of forgiveness and please I want you to listen and gain something really good from here I came across this and it was really it really ministered to me and I said I should share this with the church praise the Lord I'm sure you are familiar with this book. Okay, if you get back home, go and check the one of May 6th, Wednesday. So I'm going to read directly from there. Like I said, the topic there is the power of forgiveness. I read. Here are four things you need to know about forgiveness. One, forgiveness does not make what happened to you right. It means you've made a decision not to let it control your life. By forgiving and attempting to restore the relationship, you reclaim your peace of mind. If the other person refuses to acknowledge what happened or that it was wrong, the offense can and should still be forgiven. Forgiveness does not depend on the other person. It depends on you. Number two, forgiveness matters. Even when the offending party refuses to admit guilt. When you wait for someone to admit he or she was wrong, you're placing your future in that person's hand. Forgiveness is first 
and foremost for your own benefit, not the benefit of others. By forgiving, you are letting the pain and hurt go and moving forward. Praise the Lord. Are you following me? Number three. Your willingness to forgive can move the other person to seek forgiveness. Perhaps the person who hurt you doesn't the person, perhaps the person who hurt you doesn't feel they deserve to be forgiven. Or they may know what they did was wrong, but lack the courage to step forward and ask for forgiveness. When you make the first move, it opens the door and allows them to reach out and find mercy and understanding. Forgiveness is easier when you accept that we all need it. When you refuse to forgive because you think someone's offenses are greater than your own, that's pride. And God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. The Bible says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ also forgave you. Once you realize the depth of God's grace towards you, it's easier to extend grace to others. Praise the Lord. Now, let me just identify two, three, four points that I want you to go home with. And please, or the visuals, just flash it so that they can take note of it. Praise the Lord. I just want to give out one or two, three points that you need to go home with. One, forgiveness doesn't make what happened to you right. It means you've made a decision not to let it control your life. Number two, by forgiving and attempting to restore the relationship, you reclaim your peace of mind. Number three points I want you to note. Forgiveness doesn't depend on the other person. It depends on you. Number th four points I want you to note. When you wait for someone to admit he or she was wrong, you are placing your future in that person's hand. Number four. Is it four or five? Five. Forgiveness is first and foremost for your own benefit. Not the benefit of others. Number six. By forgiving, you are letting the pain and the hurt go and moving forward. The next one. Your willingness to forgive can move the other person to seek forgiveness. Forgiveness is easier when you accept that we all need it. Praise the Lord. Now, I've given us one or two, four or five points. I will step down for the coordinator to come and coordinate us. But I want to give us room. Please welcome uh, our sister, Sister Ruth Osebue. Let's clap for Jesus. Now, I don't know your experience. But I wish we can have one, two, or three persons 
who would want to share their experience. Maybe somebody that hurt you and why you are finding it difficult to forgive the person. Or somebody who hurt you and not minding what the person did, you are able to forgive the person. Whichever side you belong, we'll be glad if you share your experience with us. God bless you. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. Um, we've heard from the pastor what he said about forgiveness. I was reading the other day, um, somebody sent something to my phone. And um, he gave an illustration. He says that um, in a class, the teacher wanted to teach the children concerning forgiveness. He asked them, he, she had um, sacks, asked them to bring sacks to class. And then um, she had potatoes in the class. And said, okay, everyone that has offended you, that you're finding difficult to forgive, pick a potato and put in the sack. So each child pick the potato, a potato put in the sack said, okay, if you remember another person, pick another potato, put in the sack. After a while, they all had sack full of potato. He said, okay, now carry this sack of potato all through the day. So these children carry the sack of potato. And it became very heavy. They did not understand. They carried it the first day. They carried it the second day. Until the potato became rotten and it began to smell. The moral of this story is that, like Pastor said, from what he read, forgiveness, when we carry it around, is a load upon us. I mean, unforgiveness, sorry, is a load we carry around. When you do not forgive, you find out that the pain is in your heart. When you see the person, resentment grows inside of you and um, anger and pain inside your heart anytime you see the person. It is you that is carrying the road. It is you that begins to smell after a while. I pray that the Lord will give us grace as we look into this this morning for each and every one of us to begin to see the need to forgive. It is indeed a must in our life. I was studying on this and I looked at Colossians 3.13 and it says something. It said, at the last part, he said, we must forgive. Must is the word that was given there. Must forgive. It is something that the Lord asks us to do. So please, if you have any experience of anybody that has hurt you and you're finding it difficult to forgive, please, can we share it? And if somebody has hurt you and you have been able to walk through it, and you are forgiving the person. Come. Because I'm sure one person here that the Lord has brought into this service today to gain, to be blessed, and to have a turning point. Did you read Open Heavens this morning? He said, turning point. A turning point in the person's life. A beginning of beginnings for somebody's life today as we look into this topic. Praise the Lord. So if you have your experiences you want to share, please come up. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. I didn't see the other part of the world until I gave my life to Jesus. Several times I've shared my testimony here that I was a Muslim. I was a secretary in the central mosque. And I was the only female missionary in their midst. My father was an allergy. He built a mosque next to his house. So when I gave my life to Jesus, I saw everybody who, who claimed to be my lovers. They became my enemies immediately. In fact, they wanted me killed. I was in the same division with MK Abiola at Ansaru Di Society at Ajao Estate, Suru Lere. They did everything to entice me to retain me in Mohammedanism. But to the glory of God, because I've decided to continue with the Lord, I didn't look back. God gave me the grace to continue. So my father told my husband that he should kill whoever came to our house to follow me up. 
that anytime they come, you should just throw away the key, lock the door so that they won't be able to escape. You should make sure, because they, to them, they came to confuse our family. They came to defy our family. They didn't know they came because of my never dying soul that God doesn't want to perish eternally. Praise the Lord. But to the glory of God, God, on my behalf, I gave my life to Jesus at Christian Pentecostal Mission at Jaro Estate. Port Road. The general superintendent of that church, Reverend Ezekiel, gathered people together to pray with me, to fortify me with the fire of the Holy Ghost because it was terrible. They just wanted me killed. Muslims prefer their relations killed than for them to say they give their lives to Jesus. Because to them, they think they have humiliated them. But, but my late husband used to ask, what do you lack? You don't lack anything. Why did you go to church? What do you want that I have not given to you? But to the glory of God, I continued. So because of my steadfastness, the GS told people to pray for me. He told them to order for an accommodation for me. They did all they could. And because God gave me the grace not to look back, my people now started to, to, uh, to think otherwise. I left Lagos. I was on campus because of the persecution. I kept praying for my mother because she was so close to me. I was the only child of my parents for many years. And my mother was so close to me. So when I, I was praying for my mother, that God would comfort her So Because to her, it was unbecoming of her daughter being treated that way. So while I was on campus praying, by the time I came in December, my mother had given her life to Jesus. And my father said, my mother was mad. So to, to him, both of us were mad. But at the end of the day, that man who didn't want to see me became my best friend, my father. So the glory of God, before, before my husband passed away, he even requested, where are the people who will pray for me? Because why? I prayed to God to give me the grace to forgive them. I kept loving him. When he was at the point of death, other people abandoned him. I did not abandon him. It was, it got to understand that my son, an undergraduate, who gave his life to Jesus. Maybe he was poisoned. I didn't know. He was sick. They didn't tell me. He was hospitalized. They didn't allow me to see my son. He died. They didn't allow me to see him. They didn't tell me. They buried my son. It was so terrible. But still, I for, I, God gave me the grace to forgive. And while I was still receiving treatment from my undergraduate son who passed away, my husband felt sick. I didn't abandon him, despite the way I was maltreated. I kept going about with money, that if it is money, shame to money. I was going about with my checkbook just to make sure that he came back to life. But he didn't make it. At the point of death, he called the doctor, go and listen to my wife. The person who rejected me now told the doctor to come and listen to me because he realized I didn't abandon him. I took our brethren there. He said, where are the people who will pray for me? And he gave his life to Jesus. He was like a thief on the cross. But at the point of death, he gave his life to Jesus. Because he saw I didn't leave him. I kept showing love. I kept caring for him. Even my father, it got to a stage before he passed on about three years ago that among all his children, I was the best to the glory of God. He handed everything over to me because I kept showing love. I, it is not easy to forgive people who hurt you. Particularly who treated you to that extent. I was disclaimed. I was rejected. I was, abund I, I was abandoned. I was humiliated. I was maltreated. I, I, they used to naked me. The moment I returned from, they would tear my clothes from head to toe and throw me out of the house. That you are confessors. What are you looking for? What do you lack? Like took you to church. To some people, they think only people. The people who come to church are people who are relics. But I give God glory that I was able to forgive them. And both of them asked for pardon and forgiveness before they died. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Please, four minutes, please. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My name is Miracle Mauke. So, forgiveness. We can't hear you. God. Hello? Praise the Lord. I have. It all, it all started when I was in school. There's one of my friends, a very good friend, Elvis, his name. So, we are very close. That we do things together, we share things together. All of a sudden, after our graduation, I found out, I found out that. If there is a course that he failed, he needs to receive. 
I called him to come and sort himself out. But most times, I help him in his assignment, even when he's not around. So, even when lecturers are not around, I will call him to start coming for lectures. So, when we graduated, so everybody was sorting out themselves out. So, I called him that he has two exams to write. So, he came down and wrote the exam. I went back to Lagos. This year, I was calling him if he has sorted himself out. He said, yeah, that is still sorting it. Not knowing that this guy has gone for service without me knowing. The mom, have, which is an HOD, helped him in school. So he helped him sort everything out and make sure that he followed people that is, that is going for November. But he went without telling me. I heard it from a friend that he has gone for service. So I was very angry. So when I called him, he kind of told me, he told me that, and I saw real, I say, Elvis, you are not a true friend. So because of that, I was very angry with him, so I deleted his number. Up till now, I'm still angry with him. I find it difficult to forgive him. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm Mrs. Ario. My sister, you are married for 24 years. 24 years, I had two children, one girl and one boy. So at the end, my husband called me. He went for a contract in Enugu. He called me and told me that uh, along the line, he has a girlfriend. I fallen in an Enugu. Along the line, we're best friends. We can't miss each other. He's traveling to abroad. You give me a phone number, I will hold it. Everything. But I did not know for one year that he has a girlfriend in Enugu. I'll call him by 6 o'clock, he answer me. Anytime I call him, he answer me. I'll hear some noise in the background. I will say, who is talking? You say, telephone. <laughs> we keep on living and living and living. We live very well. We live very well. We live very well for 24 years. People know us in Lagos. They know us in abroad, everywhere. We are living, living best friend. That day, he called me one day on, on Sunday like this. He told me, I suspected him. I started suspecting him. You know, sometimes he leave his phone. I'll pick it. He started dis disturbing that I should not answer his phone again before. I was answering his phone. And I found of when he's answering phone, when he finished, because we will pray for God to prosper us. When he finished, I answer, say, what is that? Life on, life on, he was 28. I was 24 when he got married. In Lagos here, two of us were do kabu kabu. He was driving, I was on, I was contractor. Um, uh, Conductor. In Lagos here. We made it. One day he called me. He said, you want to marry? I said, why? I was crying throughout that Sunday. I called my daughter. My daughter was doing youth service. I called him and said, come and see what your daddy is saying. My daughter came and asked him. He repeated it again. My daughter said, my father, if you will marry, I will hate you. We, we wave it out. I beg him, beg him, refuse. I said, please. Don't marry. He said, want more children. I said, more children. We have a, we have a baby boy, boy. We have a girl. We have some of that way we are training. My daughter started naming the ones we are training for him. He said, no. He has already gone into that gear very well. So, later on, one day, he packed his load and leave the house. And joined the gear in Enugu. We made it. We bought a house in Enugu. We bought a house. He took money from Lagos here and go and buy a house in Enugu. What he told me what he was buying the house is that. That house, when we go to a holiday in the village, we we'll go to Enugu and stay. I say, okay, no problem. I say, okay, no problem. He took money we have in Lagos and go and buy the house. Later, he started dealing with the girl. So two of, us, two of them started dealing with each other. The girl could not get pregnant. 
So when the girl did not get pregnant, what annoyed him most? I don't know. Every time I keep on asking God, am I going to forgive them? I don't know. I say, God, tell me what I will do. What annoyed me most? The girl who to look, should not took it. They went and did IVF. IVF. Both of them. The girl had a child. That is what he said. I don't know whether it's true or not. He's living with the girl. And living at home with my children in this Lagos. My daughter decided not to talk to him again. I begged my daughter. I said, no. He listened to what pastor is saying every day. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. I say, God, today they are talking about forgiveness. My son told me, Mama, mother, go out and go and talk about forgiveness. I say, how will I forgive him? If he pregnant the girl, I will say pregnant the girl. But they did IVF. I don't know how to start. So I don't know how to start. That is why I'm standing here. Praise the Lord. My own case is uh, in my working place. So, I, we, we have a, a commandant in my school since uh, 2013. He came in. That 2013, my daughter got admission. She took the common entrance, the Air Force entrance, and she passed. Then when they were giving admission, my commander could not give my daughter admission. One day, it dawned on me, I walked into his office boldly and confronted him. He said, sir, good morning. He said, good morning, what can I do for you? I said, excuse me, sir, please, I want to see the result of my daughter. Why you could not give her admission? He, in fact, Holy Spirit touched him. He got the list. And show me the result. My daughter got 61 points, which is above average, which they recommended. Then I asked him, sir, why can't you give my daughter admission, at least to save me some stress? He said, um, anyway, I will look into it. I should come back. When I came back again, he said that anyway, my daughter is not up to the age. I said, sir, I'm a class teacher. The students are in, in my class some of them, they are even eight years and nine years. I know what I'm passing through to control those children. But what about my daughter? And in fact, I spoke to him boldly without minding his rank. He said, um, I should leave his office. He called his PA to walk me out. I said, thank you, sir. God bless you. I left. Along the line, my senior aunties, you know, they walked to him. Why don't you favor this woman? After all, he's only just a daughter. She had been here. Suffering, she's a class teacher. Help us, save that uh, uh, stress for her. The man refused. I prayed. The man refused. I said, okay, no problem. One day, uh, we received a message that he should give teachers children admission. Then he said that he will do that. He took orders, he left my daughter. I said, okay, no problem. After that, 2013, 2014, they said I should have patients. I should come for a uh, transfer. I came for transfer. He said that they would do an uh, extra special ex exam, which we have not done in that school before. I said, because of me, no problem. I set my daughter on, you know, special coaching. The date for the exam, the exam is supposed to be, let's say, tomorrow. Today, in the evening, the man shot listed names that he chose. I told him, I will never forgive you. Look at the stress you are making me to pass. I will go to airport, drop my daughter, turn back, go to Air Force. If we close, I will still go back there. I will be toiling around the school, suffering. While other children that are here, I'm, I know what I passed through. No problem. All my aunties spoke to this man. All the HODs, they went to him. He refused. I said, okay, no problem. What happened? One day, he called for a meeting. We went for the meeting. Immediately I stepped in. He started narrating my story that a teacher here brought her child in the school and the child was taking uh, lessons without a formal uh, uh, admi uh, admission and the others. As he was saying that in me, I, you know, already I was not happy with him. 
all with all the grievances in me, I did not mind his position. I stood up. I said, "Excuse me, sir. Can you mention the name of that person?" Hey, he was so surprised the way I spoke to him, because I was so grieved. He looked at me. He said, "Okay, since you want us to wash our dirtiness in the public, eh? That person is Mrs. Chuku." I said, "Eh, uh-huh. and so what?" Even my VP admin was so surprised. She was just looking at me. Mrs. Chuku, what has come over you? I said, "Excuse me, ma. Enough is enough. I have to speak it out. What is it?" Ah, I told them, "Sir, I will never forgive you." And that grievance was inside me. Throughout that day, though I was so heavy. He too could not make any move. To my greatest surprise, around the time we were about to close, he sent about three teachers. Please look for Mrs. Chuku for me. If he did not, if she did not forgive me, I will not leave this premises today. They were coming to me. I said, please, everybody, go and rest. Some even told me after that thing happened, I should go and beg. For what? I stood on my right. What do you mean? I cannot go. At last, I went to him. He said, "Please, I should forgive him. It's not by his own making. It's the order from Abuja. By God's grace, I prayed and I forgave him. Today, he will see me. I see Mrs. Chuku. Good man. I say, good morning, sir. Yeah. Praise God. So, um, I will just m- make it um in a in a summary. So, I went to the states for a short course last year." So, uh, in the apartment where I was staying, you know, I was with uh, two white, one American and one Norwegian. So, um, the Norwegian guy was very racist. And I don't like things that would try to trample on my self-esteem. So, we were always fighting all the time. So, the American guy would always come around to um, separate us and all those stuff. So, so it was... At a point, it was like that. Is either he leaves the house or I do. So, so I, I said no, I can't go. So you have to go if you want to go. So he left. But before this time, we got money together to to buy furnitures in the apartment. So I told him, dude, pay me my money. So he said no, I can't pay you an asshole. So that that stuff. I, I was really angry. I was thinking about to how to go and beat him up or something. So, so I just, so at a point, at a point, I just really, really just calmed down, left it, and I, but I knew that when the anger was making me, I was feeling very sick and doing bad in school. So I just forgot everything, and it just left like that. Then, even when I came to the school, it was only wise, because it's in, it's in Bobber, California. It was only wise in my class. So, um, they were very racist at first. When they did, they were like Nigerian, African. So, at the point, they now accepted me, and I, I for, forgave them for what they did before and the racist comments they made. So that made me. I had to talk to my mom at home because I, at first, as a child, I, I saw my my aunt and my father's father's uh, my aunt and my father's aunt maltreat my mother. Even when they were burying my grandmother, they had to push my mother out of the, the living room. So I, was, I grew up very angry at them. So I had to now talk to my siblings at home. So I just forgive my aunts. That is, that is nothing. And even though now they try to make amends for what they did before when I was little. But now it's all good. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you so very much, all our speakers. And um, as we hand over to the pastor, oh, <laughs> all right, okay. Um, mommy, you said, how am I going to forgive the man that hurt you? It's very difficult. Um, when we're preparing for this, forgiveness is a very, very difficult thing, especially when the person has hurt you so bad. When you listen to mommy talk, you wonder, all the years of deceit, camouflage, and all that. It breaks the heart. But um, the word of God tells us in the book of Matthew 6, 14 to 15, it says, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, 
their sins. Your father will not forgive your sins. Praise the Lord. And we are all children of God. And we have said we will serve Jesus. We will obey him. We will live like him and be like him. And show forth his light. And if we intend to do this, we must live in obedience to the word of God. Now, the first thing is, you ask the Holy Spirit to help you to forgive. And as you begin, the Lord will begin to walk in your heart and you pray for him. And as you do this, I believe God will do a miracle in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, we want to also give room for one or two persons who want to, who want to do their own by writing. Praise the Lord. Or maybe you are not bold enough or you feel shy. You want to write. And we'll take just three more. We already have one. And I'm going to say what the person wrote. And then maybe I will ask for opinion. What should this woman do? She just sent something to me and said, how do you forgive a man, your husband, and you find out that you woke up one night and saw him on top of your daughter. That's your own child. And that thing led to pregnancy. How do you handle that? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How do you handle that? Anybody? Sister Babalola, thank you. Praise the Lord. Can we please listen to Sister Babalola? Praise the Lord. I've just passed the paper down to Pastor before this question came around. Really, we were just saying, I think I and Sister Ori told us that, that even this story will not come out, we will kill him on a lighter note. But one major thing, I'm one kind of person that people hardly ought, I easily forgive. But the moment I say somebody has offended me, it's difficult for me to let go. Until I watch this Mount Zion film. Nobody, you know, I've been teaching in Sunday school. And I know that God did not give me any condition to forgive. That I forgive as long as people are offending me. And let go as often as the offenses come. And, you know, I know it's a big challenge. I prayed. And one way or the other, the Lord, through somebody, led me to watch that Mosaic film. That's the Ark of Covenant, a theory. In that film, is enough ministration for me. And I will just try to tell the story as briefly as possible. There was a particular king, a Yoruba king, and this I want to um, Thing they do in Yoruba, they call it a, a, a jide way. In that case, they kill another person to renew their life and elongate their life. This man has been doing it for a long time. The first son had a wife, and the wife was pregnant. The king was king, sick, as usual. He needed another life to renew his life, and they said they need a pregnant woman. It was late in the night. They had to do it before morning. Unfortunately, the prince and the wife came home. Eventually, they robbed something. The woman lost the pregnancy. She died. And eventually, the son discovered that, Ah, Papa, you do this to me. I will never let you go. You are a wicked father. You are this and that. I need to stand on his throne in Yoruba land using the staff of office and throne. So place a course on person, it depends, it's only God that can really liberate that person. If swear he caused the son, he became mad. 
and he was roaming around for a very long time. Eventually, he gave his sanitary, his sanitary through the church. He became a Christian. He remarried. He had children, and he was living fine. Unfortunately, again, the king is to make another sacrifice. And they have to come to Ibadan where he's residing. And they did not see any other child apart from his own grandson again. Of the same prince to kill for the ritual. When he got there, they asked the boy to eat. He said on Fridays they don't eat. What is your name? My name is Ark of Covenants. I'm a potieri. Uh -uh. Who are you? Without knowing the father and the mother, say we can't do anything. And he began to... Shout incantation in the Lord, declaring that he is son of the most high God. Nothing can be done to him. In one way or the other, the king began to get better. Hello, Sarah Bellum. Please yes, round up. Please round up. Okay. And eventually, they said he can't find his son unless he forgives somebody that has offended him. He has to go back to his father for, to clear up. Eventually, he finds his son. If he has not forgiven the father, he would not have found his son. So what am I saying in essence? No matter what, you still there to go. I'm not forgiving most of the time because of the person. I forgive so that my heavenly father too will forgive me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As I was seated there, my spirit was worrying me because... Uh, my own forgiveness, God taught me about it. I came from a family where my father was highly educated and my mother was not. And then he married my mother and uh, did not treat her right. And uh, we grew up and we saw it. And uh, unfortunately for my mother too, she had nine girls and their boy and i was just the one following the boy but my mother made a big mistake because when she had this misunderstanding with my father among all her children she was very pretty fair and then i was the only one that was looking like my father and so that misunderstanding and uh, I, will I call it hatred? She transferred it to me. First and foremost, I was very sickly. I was not good looking as they themselves among all her girls and daughters. And I saw her most of the time, she would just leave me. Food, uh, love, affection. My name was, my village name was Ntiano. The world will hear about me. And then, because of that treatment, my, my father changed my name to Inkem. So he will carry me, he will bath me, he will take care of me. And you know, that difference was there. And uh, one, at a time, I started wondering whether my mother was my own real mother. I learned how to walk, I will do the manual job, I will do so many things. But thanks be to God, who helps us in life. As I was growing up, I learned how to work hard, and it has helped me till today. Later, I lost this, my father. And then um, my mother, you know, as I was working hard and got married, and things started working out in my life, I became the breadwinner for my siblings, for her. And uh, because she was not a believer at the point in time, she called me and said, you cannot carry this your lock and remain in your husband's house. Therefore, what we want you to do is that there is these uh, people that change lock. You, we are going to do something and then your lock will go back to your brother so that that uh, your good luck will remain still in the family. I thought she was joking. After about three months, there was this meeting and they said it was prayer, and I was called. I came from Lagos, and uh, from my husband's house, I even cooked, brought money, brought so many things. Only when they were doing that sort of thing, they said, bring your shirt, bring this, hand over to your brother, your brother will hand over his own to you, and so on and so forth. 
So what happened to me in the bus, God reminded me. Because by then I had given my life to God. God reminded me as I was on the bus, the bus was moving, but air came in and was carrying me around my chair. And my scarf just went off. And then I told her, I told them that I don't understand what they were doing, and I left. At a point in time, I had my last baby because I had girls too, four girls, without a son. And then one of these, my younger sisters, had a boy outside wedlock, and I said, let me have this, your boy, so that I can bring him up among my daughters because I could do it. They said, I saw that you will have everything. You are so blessed, you are this, you are this. So the animosity was there. Even my mother came and carried the baby boy. And I prayed. And God, in his infinite mercy, after seven years that I had my last daughter, gave me a son. That was not just the issue then. There was this issue that when I had this son, my, the first daughter died, my senior. And then I had to handle the barrier, the wear without running around. I broke my leg. I was even on stretcher while she was buried. And then my husband and I had a little misunderstanding. Mommy, praise the Lord. Please, Please I just up. want to round up. Sorry. Yes. Just give me a little time. What I want to teach parents, because it's a lesson that you shouldn't mishandle your children. Because whatever God created, he finished and said, it by work is good. However, at that point in time, it was so glaring that after that burial, uh -uh, my mother and my sisters, they were all in my house. I will want food. Please give me food. My baby is suckling. Uh -uh, they will enter one room, eat. Let her bring her money. She has money. Now, why must this money be in this man's family? I will not have food too feed to breastfeed my baby. One day I cried. I was so hungry and shaking. That's my mother. I went to their room. I saw them taking tea, taking everything, and I just jumped at the food. They threw it away. And then I stood up. I said, this is my house. Mommy, you and your children leave my house. And from that time, for many years, we were not talking together, but I saw them suffering. I saw her coming back and saying, my daughter forgive us. In fact, my younger ones that joined her because they beat me up in my own house because my husband was not there. So I locked them up for some days before my younger ones, before I sent them away. But when she came back as my mother and started begging me, to God be the glory, I forgave her because she's my mother. That forgiveness, God helped me you know, to move on in life because at the point we were not together, things were so tough. I started going back to my area of being food, not having breakthrough, not having peace. But as soon as I forgave her, things started getting well with me. Praise, Praise the Lord. Mommy, thank you. Yeah. yeah. My brother, please, four minutes, please. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am Brother Emmanuel. I had a mind-blowing question on the man that the, the wife caught having a, a sex with the, with the daughter and later the daughter became pregnant. And the question that was thrown to the judge is, how would this woman be able to forgive the husband? Praise the Lord. Now the issue is this, forgiveness is very, very important. We see tight payment of tight in the church, not only as a command, but as an act of worship. Forgiveness is almost like that. Forgiveness is an act of worship and also a divine command from God. I have my own story, just like every one of us. And to start with mine, before I answer that question, my story was like this. I grew up in a polygamous family, I had an auntie who was so rich, but she didn't have children. She couldn't train any of us to school, and at this stage she was so upset and called us chaff. I became very, very upset with that word chaff, because I see myself as a seed of substance and not chaff. And I was so upset with this woman, I didn't get to see her until she died and she was buried. 
Praise the Lord. In 1995, when she died, that was the same time that Igineware George, the, the late brother of uh, Finidi George, died. I, if I had a choice of going to any of these, of these two burials, I would have preferred to go to Igineware George's burial because when he, when he was alive playing for the Eagles, he made me happy compared to my late auntie who didn't make me happy. Praise the Lord. So I stayed put here in Lagos. She was dying. I didn't attend her burial. But the following year after she died, it was like the story of uh, uh, the year that after uh, Uzziah died. The following year, 1996, God visited me in a three hours, 15 minutes revelation and changed the whole of my life. And one afternoon after that, re after that revelation, I was standing, not sleeping in the afternoon. They got around after 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And I saw a cop. I was like this. What is happening? And God told me that this is the scoff of your late father's sister. Forgive her. That was the message. And since then, it's changed my life. The, the issue of forgiveness is something that, if you come to my house, is something that I keep drumming on every day. Forgiveness is of God. You need to live by the Holy Spirit to be able to forgive. And if you don't forgive, why did God even bring a woman that had died and be buried to me? If I did not forgive her, it would become an impediment to my ministry. So this is the issue that all of us will face squarely. Now, I also refer you to the issue of, uh, to the story of Joyce Meyer. I'm, no, I, I'm sure that most of you here know about Joyce Meyer. She had been sexually abused by her father and her, and her own mother was aware of it. She left the house. God blessed her. She changed her life. And later, you know, God asked her to buy a house for her father. She refused. But God urged her. God continued to speak to her. And she later changed her mind. She has been announced to the whole world. Often her, her, her father sexually abused her. If Joyce Meyer could forgive, you too can forgive. Praise the Lord. That is the truth. And one other thing is this. Uh, when Jesus Christ was being nailed to the cross, those, those people that were killing him were telling him that his blood should be on their own heads. If Jesus Christ had said amen, I'm sure none of us would have been here today. He forgave. Praise the Lord. And then lastly, lastly, please, lastly, if you all heard about Yonggi Cho, there was a lady who was so committed, you know, in the things of in the house of God. She was in Yonggi Cho's ministry in South Korea. One day she was in the church. She came back from the church to her house. She saw her husband having sex with his own secretary on their matrimonial bed. If this woman had taken the choice of forgiveness, I'm sure she would have been alive today. But she took the devil's option, took a, a, took a cutlery, a, a knife in her kitchen, killed the husband, and after that killed herself. She had committed murder and suicide. Forgiveness would have been the better option. Praise the Lord. And Praise so the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you so very much, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. We have a lot coming in. Um, I, I have one in front of me. It says, getting married, I prefer to get married to a man that wouldn't cheat on me because I know I can never forgive a cheat. I lived in a home where my husband kept sleeping with his cousin and sent me packing after I was three months pregnant and he never came back, even as I kept calling, begging, and sending people to intercede for me. How can I forgive him now? I have carried the pregnancy alone for six months, and my baby is three months old now. He is back and begging, but still has not changed a bit of his ways, as he still calls and sleeps with his woman on Facebook. He says, I don't know what to do. Praise the Lord. I want to read this. This is terrible. Amen. Please listen. How do a mother forgive his teenage son who constantly drugs her? He drugs the mother to have sex with the mother <laughs> for ritual sake. To the extent of impregnating the mother. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, amen, amen. The, the, the things we have here are so much and so shocking. I don't know. There's a long one here. This 
This one says, um, I was engaged to my fiance on the 1st of January. We were planning to wed in April, Easter 2015. He made me to start worshipping in his church, which I eventually did. We were planning everything together. Not until the pastor's sister came back from Brazil. That is, that is into illegal business, which my fiancé was introduced to her in the church for them to do the business together, which I was never in support of. Then everything became worse. The lady liked my fiancé and made it possible for my fiancé not to have time for me. Each time I asked, he would say I should be patient with him. Never knew both of them were having a relationship till he broke up with me and gave me a nasty reason that his family who knew me when I was young, a friend to our family, does not love me. That he has been begging them. Then I asked myself, how possible would that be? Because the family and our family had been friends a long time till now, before we started talking. I never knew it was because of the lady that he stopped the marriage. Because Please, how can I forgive him? Please forgive him. The Lord has something better for you. Praise the Lord. Uh, the last one, I'm not going to read, but I've read it just to paraphrase it. Um, the lady, there's this young man who showed interest in her, and blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, she got pregnant, and uh, the guy promised marriage, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, got pregnant, have baby, no marriage. The man just threw her out and all this stuff. Praise the Lord. Now, the message we are trying to pass this morning is how, one, is it possible to forgive? Two, how do I forgive? Three, if I forgive, will I forget? <laughs> Praise the Lord. The pastor says he steps down from me. Um, can we forgive? Can we forget? Can we forget? Are you sure? Are you sure you cannot forget? But there's somebody that will help you to forget with time. Are you sure? Can we forget? Yes, we can. With the help of the Holy Spirit. It's difficult. The cases are very, very hard. But God can help us to forgive. And with time, he will do his work in our lives. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Matter for discussion. We will continue next talk back. But let me hand over to mommy. So please, when you hear talk back, be prepared. Come to church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You see, it's very pathetic. All the things that we have had. You know, but when you sit down and really, really think deep about these things that happen, there are many people seated here. That if they dare open their mouths to say something, I mean, we will all begin to say ha, ha, ha. But how do we move on in life? There's something that I made up my mind. That there is nothing, no event of life that will determine my destiny. Because the Bible tells me that Christ has redeemed me. That passage in Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For those who walk after the spirit and not by the flesh. Brothers and sisters, a man and a, a woman, they worked very, very hard. And I'm sure that some other people's testimonies are like that. For many, many years, and they, 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 somebody now took money that they both two people worked for. And went away and, and built a house and put a girl who does not know how they started in life. Now tell me, 
How do you begin to tell that woman to forgive? But you see, like the analogy that the sister Ruth made, the load is on you if you refuse to forgive. It, you should not allow anybody or any event to determine what happens to your life. I am more than a wife. I am more than a mother. I am more than a pastor. I am more than a pastor's wife. God has a specific purpose for my life and I must fulfill it. It doesn't matter what I come across in life. It doesn't matter how much pain I suffer. But there is a purpose for me to fulfill. Otherwise, I will just come, I will see, and I will go. No testimony. It is very, very difficult if we are walking by the flesh. But honestly, the only way to go about it is to be born again. That's the bottom line. Once you are born again, and truly, truly born again, the Spirit of God will dwell in you. The pain can be much, but when you take time to go to your father, it, ha it happens to me. I go back to my father. I will pray. I will talk to him as, I, as if he's seated. This thing has really, really hurt me. If you leave me by myself, I will not forgive that man. But I know that what you want and your desire for me is that I forgive. So, Lord, please help me. And I have discovered over the years that the pain will begin to ease. The pain will begin to ease until a time when it will cease to hurt me. You will only succeed in hurting yourself when you are holding on to it. And that thing will determine your life. You will become bitter. You will engage in hatred. The Bible says that if you hate your brother, you are a murderer. You now become an enemy of God. For Why? Because of that person who has hurt you and you allow him to continue to hurt you. To hurt you till eternity. My brothers and my sisters, it is not easy to forgive if we are walking by the flesh. The pain can be horrible. You will not be able to sleep. You will be thinking, therefore sicknesses will come. Diseases will come because of the, open, of the opening in your life. The, the powers of darkness will attack you and attack everything that concerns you. Must I give such power to an individual in my life? No. I withdraw the power from anybody that wants to hurt me because Christ has redeemed us from this cause of the law. Sisters and brothers, if you have been deeply hurt, I want you to just surrender it to God. It is, if, if you, you don't even have the power to change the situation, if you had the power to change the situation, I'm sure you would have changed it. But there is a God in heaven, the one that has the ability to change our lives. Let us hand over to him, and you will discover that even in that situation, you can still live your normal life. You can still live your whole life. You can still fulfill your destiny. And you will surely fulfill your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Just try God. And see what he will do. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Now, um, mommy has spoken all. We just want to, especially those who have very deep issues, um, please see us in the office so that we can sit with you and talk with you how you can go with, about some things. Praise the Lord. The mother whose son was drugging her and having sex with her and resulted to pregnancy. The man 
the woman whose husband slept with the daughter resort to pregnancy so many other cases please see us in the office so that we can have one-on-one -on -one discussion praise the lord and um, also our mommy will also want to see every one of you and some of our counselors god has helped them my wife and so many people please come we want to have a discussion with you the lord will bless you in jesus name the last thing i want to do before we go if um whether you came out or you didn't come out but something happened that hurt you so terribly well i want you to come before the altar so that god will give you the grace shall we be on our feet can we be on our feet if you are in that category somebody somewhere did something so hot it's been difficult for you please mommy says something it's only by the grace of god there's no amount of counseling i can give you that can solve it only your father please come before the altar so that you can receive that grace please come kneel down and just go and pray i want to give you like five few minutes and then mommy will come and pray for you Just stay before the altar. Pour your heart before God. Just tell him that Lord you know as for me it's not possible for me but with you all things are possible. Just tell God pour your heart before him. What was done to you by your father, your mother, your friend, your neighbor, your husband, your wife, and it's been very difficult. Only God. Please, this side is free. Don't overcrowd that place. Come this way. Come this way. I want to give you five minutes. Just go ahead and pour your heart before God. Ask God to help you. Ask God to help you. By your strength, you can't do it. You can't. By your strength, you can't. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Should we take, let's take our, we want to take our anthem, we're going to take everything complete. You can still stay there, just sing it from the altar, but you can stand if you want to stand, please. Shall we? When I am down and all my soul so weary, when troubles come and my heart will be, then I am still and waiting in the silence. Um,
Shall we pray, please? Our Father and our God, we appreciate you, O God. We are so grateful unto you that we have a Father that is so mindful of us, who is interested in all our ways. Father, please accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity that you have given us today to come into your presence to bear our mind. Knowing fully well that he who has made ears, can he not hear? Father, we thank you because we know that you have the power to give us release in our hearts. We have poured out our hearts, oh God, Believing that, Lord, you can reach out into our aching hearts. Where hands cannot reach, you can touch. Father, this morning, oh God, even as your children are standing in your presence, Father, I pray that you will reach out to them individually and severally in the name of Jesus. Every pain that they are suffering, Daddy, Almighty God, let the balm of Gilead, O oh God, be released into such hearts. And let there be healing for them this morning in the name of Jesus. Many, many, O oh God, have no solution at sight. But the Bible has assured us that with you, there's no impossibility. And so, Lord, this morning, Whatever category, whatever thing, my father, that is the burden in our hearts, that is the mountain that each one is facing. This morning we ask, oh God, that you will raise us up. That we will stand on our mountains. That we will begin to look down, oh God, on every issue that has hurt us in life. And they will become as nothing. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, oh God, this morning that you will release your peace that passeth all human understanding. Let it attend unto us in every aspect of our lives in the name of Jesus. The grace, oh God, to forgive. Father, please release unto each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Where we find it extremely difficult that if we surrender it unto you, you have asked us to come. We should surrender our heavy burdens. And that is exactly what your children have come this morning to surrender at your feet. Father, please carry their bodies and release your own that is light unto each and every one of them in the name of Jesus. As they begin to go, our Lord and our God, please make a way of joy for them. A way of peace for them. A way of solution for them. In the name of Jesus, that they will look back to today and begin to see your hand moving in every aspect of their lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask for restoration this morning. For every joy that is lost in the name of Jesus. How you will do it, we don't know, but we know that you are more than able. Father, please release that joy, the joy of salvation, into every heart this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We are grateful unto you. Glory and honor be unto your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's clap for Jesus as they go back. Let's appreciate God in their life. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to thank everyone that um, shared their own experience and those who sent us um, in written form, the Lord will strengthen you 
and the Lord will perfect that which he has started in Jesus' name. Normally, it can be very difficult to do a thanksgiving after talk back. Amen. But one of the solutions to heart is to dance. One of our mommy was telling me yesterday, this morning, our mother was on.